All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Navigating No Contact with Toxic Parents. I'm your host, Tracy Principe. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I am excited to have this conversation today with Ingrid Clayton, PhD. She's a clinical psychologist that works with trauma. She's located in Los Angeles, California. And if you don't follow her, you should go follow her on Instagram. She's got really great content and I would say fun um, or, you know, kind of making light of trauma with, um, uh, you know, or, or having a little bit of humor in this um, trauma space with her reels and stories. They're just really, really creative. So definitely check her out. It's Ingrid Clayton, PhD at Ingrid Clayton PhD on Instagram and her website, website IngridClaytonPhD.com. Um, so definitely um, go check her out. So Ingrid, thank you so much for being here today and having this discussion. I think today we're gonna um, dive into what gaslighting means um, what it is, um, how, you know, how that is experienced when it comes to trauma, how society um, might, you know, gaslight us, and then how we might even gaslight ourselves, right, with minimizing trauma. Um, that certainly, you know, I grew up in the 70s, I didn't even know, I didn't know what was happening, especially when we have this more uh, emotional neglect and and um i would say narcissistic traded parents mm -hmm. i know now i didn't know back then what my mom mm -hmm. was doing but it was gaslighting and i always felt something but of course didn't have words for what was happening to me um and so you know i call that the invisible trauma mm -hmm. um and then grew up as an adult, as uh, overachieving, perfectionism, addictions, alcoholism, you name it, <laughs> horribly volatile relationships in my 20s, mm -hmm. um, and never connected the dots back to my childhood. Well, you're basically just telling my story, Tracy. So thank you for having me. <laughs> we could probably end it there. No, um, I'm so grateful that you invited me here. I've loved connecting with you on Instagram. And yes, I work yeah. with complex trauma as a psychologist, but the reality is uh, I'm a survivor. And so I had a yeah. very similar experience growing up in the 70s, not really having language for what was going on. Yeah. Uh, I had some language. I knew there was alcoholism. You know, I, mm. um, I wrote my eighth grade term paper when I could have chosen any topic. Mine was alcoholism, the family disease. You know, so mm. I have been trying to figure this wow. thing out um, since I was 12 years old, you know, probably wow. younger than that. And yeah. the reality is, as much like you, um, I spent decades after that trying to figure it out, including, you know, three degrees in psychology, becoming a clinical psychologist, eventually specializing in trauma, not still mm. really understanding the depth of my own. Yeah. And um, it really wasn't until five years ago yesterday, or two days ago, actually, was the anniversary of my stepfather's passing. And it was mm. only when he died, because he was the narcissist in my family, yeah. that I feel like I was finally safe enough in the world and in my own body mm. to come in and start to unpack um, what happened and more than what, what happened, what it what it did to my nervous system and yeah. how I lived with that chronic sort of dis-ease in so many mm. ways, toxic relationships, like you mentioned, toxic yeah. shame, low self-esteem, imposter syndrome, perfectionism. Mm. Um, you know, I've been sober for 26 years. I thought, oh, that's, that was the thing, you know, that was mm. the thing. And it, yeah. I don't, I don't drink and use drugs anymore. I'm so grateful yeah. But it didn't touch in really to the, the trauma piece. So um, true. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's a really good point because uh, I think I, I, I was sober for five years at least before I ever even began to think about trauma. 
right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, a long you know, time. There was no way I could have done it in the beginning. I would have never made it. I would have drank again. Yeah. I for me yeah. too. I mean, I think these things unfolded the way they did, sort of by design. But you know, you mentioned the gaslighting thing, and and I feel like this hidden abuse, this mm -hmm. emotional psychological abuse piece, yeah. um, is one that I'm so glad we're finally giving it a little more attention in your podcast and your platform is certainly doing that. Because, you know, even though I was writing really academic papers in eighth mm. grade, trying to figure this thing out. Yeah. Um, the reality is, is that the gaslighting, which is basically uh, manipulation, mm. psychological manipulation and minimization yeah. designed mm, yeah. to make someone question their reality. Mm. So, That's exactly it. Even though I knew that things were off and bad and wrong, I mean, I gave that voice to it. At the same yeah. time, when I was being gaslit and the rest of the family's being gaslit and we're kind mm -hmm. of going along as though this is our normal, what my nervous yeah. system interpreted was that, oh, yeah. maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's not that mm -hmm. bad. In fact, around that time that I wrote that term paper, friends of mine told their parents what was going on in my house and mm. they gave services. And I remember wow. almost being excited. I was like, they, the social worker wants to talk to me? Like someone's going to take this seriously? And I'll never yeah. forget to just weep when I think about it today. But I made this mm. like secret outing after school to a friend's house to talk to this social worker. And all mm. she was saying was, is there physical abuse? Have you seen physical abuse? And I was like, well, there is some, I know, but I haven't really seen it. And it wasn't the primary thing. Mm -hmm. and, and what she said to me was, emotional abuse isn't reportable. Mm. Wow. And two, two things happened. One is that she gave language for emotional abuse, which I'd never okay. heard of. Yeah. And I, that's what it is. It's emotional abuse. And at the same time, it was invalidated. So it was validated because it's a thing, but it's right. not it's not something it's not, that's bad enough to be taken. It's not that bad. Yeah. Wow. And many years later, when I did an intervention on my family, um, mm -hmm. a lot of other things had happened and social services became involved, it was sort of similar. It was like, we're going to mandate you to family therapy to kind of work mm -hmm. out the issues, but nothing changed it only got mm. worse in fact because now i'm the black sheep who's called attention mm. to it all. and, yeah. and the gaslighting got even worse because now when i've given a voice to this thing right. um, well the response was is ingrid you're a liar you made it all up yeah. you you just really want attention. Oh, and you're just, this is how you're going about it. You're just really, you know, selfish and misguided and mm. confused. I think yeah. you're misinterpreting. Like th this was all of the language, right? And yeah. so it, even though my head, my brain, my prefrontal cortex, the rational part of our mind is developed mm -hmm. as it is, which is not fully developed, it knew, it knew. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of me didn't really know because yeah. we're relational beings. We are right. wide for relationship. I don't know that I exist as a baby until I'm reflected back to you. I see you. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like we are yeah. hardwired for relationship and co-regulation and validation yeah. and when I was reaching for that in every possible way, and what I got mm. back was, you're wrong. Mm. My yeah. nervous system could not um, could not separate from that, again, even though I knew. And yeah. so then for decades, what I was living with is what I'm now referring to really as self-gaslighting because mm. I picked up the torch and told myself on some level, you don't have real trauma, Ingrid. Yeah. I'm a therapist working with other people's trauma, mm. growing up with narcissism and alcoholism, and yet I'm still telling myself, 
Yeah, yeah. but relatively speaking, you know, it wasn't that like you weren't mm. XYZ and, um, and it was self gaslighting. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, the self gaslighting. And, and I hear that all the time from clients is, well, I wasn't physically abused. I wasn't sexually abused. You know, I had food. I went to school. I had a roof over my head. Or my parents did the best they could, which mm -hmm. may be true. Sure. However, it doesn't mean that they didn't cause pain. Um, so, so I hear those statements a lot from people. Yeah. Can you add a little more context well, to those? I think what, um, well, two, two things come to mind. You mentioned before we got on that something that mm -hmm. really impacted you was reading The Body Keeps the Score, which is Bessel van der Kolk's book yeah. on trauma. And I think it was maybe 2004, early in my, in my training, um, mm -hmm. I was in a really intimate training with Besser, Bessel van der Kolk, not knowing who he was at the time or really much about mm. Trump. And he was, I was working at a residential treatment center and he started giving these case studies of patients that he had worked with. And he talked about this one woman and he started telling my story, mm. my story. Wow. And he was talking about her as though she had PTSD. Mm. And, and I went into a total shame spiral in the room. It was like, if I could have yeah. disappeared and like melted away into nothing, that would have been my yeah. preference because the first thing I wanted to do in that clinical space where I'm trying to overcome my upbringing and like have it all figured right. out and be perfectionist and an overachiever is like, oh, I have the story and the, ex the mm. lived experience of the people that were trying to help. Like it, it just yeah. filled me with shame it filled me with shame mm. and so i heard what he was saying but i still couldn't admit it yeah it wasn't cool until you know such a long time later and and here's what has helped me to finally uh, break through that gaslighting yeah uh, this voice that says you know it wasn't that bad in fact that's the um name of the memoir that i have coming out is maybe it wasn't that bad, you know? oh, when oh, i find yeah looked at my symptoms, the symptoms, yes. CPTSD, complex, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And yeah. I met every single criteria. It's like, there's mm. no debating there. Right. I have flashbacks. I have avoidance. I have chronic toxic shame. I have anxiety. I have a history of really dysfunctional you know, abusive relationships. I met every single marker. And so it's like, yeah. well, then I had to really realize, so it's not about the story. It's not about the story of what happened. It's mm -hmm. about how my nervous system read it and how I've been yeah. carrying it for all these years. So it kind of gets me out of the debate. Right. It's not the debate. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so true. And that when that was true for me is all of this. Um, my mom was like this kind of covert, you know, she was very calm, cool and collected. You, there was no, it, but it was icy, just this, not a whole lot of words, but a feeling that was terrifying for a child. Um, yeah. And, and then I was the reactive, I, you know, I was, I, I've been very reactive from a young age. And then of course, in high school, I got into drugs and drinking and, you know, just very, a lot of anger and reactivity. And my mom would just, mm, well, you know, it just in this calm, cool, collected way, look at you, yeah. you're, you're crazy one blowing up yeah mm. and there was my mom and i thought wow maybe i am crazy you know right yeah because i'm the one that's doing all this stuff and and you know but then that was my nervous system and trying to soothe myself because i had this very unloving very cold mom that didn't have a lot of words and didn't have any reaction to what you know what i was saying just stood there I right. see cold, right? Yeah. So and I remember 
even now talking about it, I still, I know exactly what that felt like. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And that all of that nervous system, um, those reactions and coping skills and everything, my poor little nervous system and being in survival, just yes. survival. Yeah. yeah. All the time. Our trauma responses. And not knowing they were trauma responses. I just thought it was me. Yeah. Yeah, just thought it was me. And so I'm going to work really hard to get away from that because I want to be normal. Right. And I want to be accepted and liked and, and I don't want to be crazy. I don't want to be flawed. Right. Yeah. yeah. How painful that is, that thing that we live mm. with so long that we really think that we're broken, you know? Yeah. And I think that was the other thing that sort of helped me finally crack through is that I did every single thing I could possibly think of to fix my brokenness. You know, mm, I yeah. got sober. I went to the other 12 yeah. programs. I sat on a million therapist couches. I went to school to become a therapist. I wrote a book. I had a private practice and I'm mm -hmm. special. I, I did all of the things and yeah. not one of them ever touched into or fixed that underlying feeling that I am yeah. broke. In fact, all it did was make me feel like even more of an imposter because now I have to pretend to be mm. this person in the world um, when I know deep down that, mm -hmm. that I'm not worthy and I don't have it figured out. And, um, and just how sad that is, that that's what, you know, complex trauma survivors, that's what we all relate to is that feeling of just being so fundamentally broken, mm -hmm. not knowing yeah. that we're just living in survival, that we're living right. in the responses that are not who we are and that it's possible to have freedom from yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in that, you know, those, those responses of minimization is also a trauma response, That's right? Because right. it has to be safe enough. We've got to create that safety of actually being able to feel the impact mm. that this had on us. Well, and especially for children, you know, that mm. idea that safety when you're a child is your caregiver, right? They're, yeah. your, they're your world. And so a child doesn't think, oh, they're wrong. The people that are responsible for raising me and keeping me safe, they can't be wrong. That's mm. like, it's hard. You can't really hold that reality. So right. I must be wrong. Yeah. It must be me. Yeah. yeah. And we've just come by that so honestly, you know, and to understand that and go, God, it makes so much sense. And I really do yeah. think the thing for me too is that knowing the difference between how my brain, my intellectual capacity mm -hmm. to understand something never touched into or repaired what my body was experiencing that these are two yeah. very separate completely separate things because mm -hmm. it's not like i didn't know what happened it's not like i couldn't mm -hmm. talk about it or that i hadn't talked about it i had but yeah. talking about it and even understanding it to a certain degree it just never changed my experience of myself or of the yeah. world and mm. that's the amazing thing that we know now about all of these, you know, somatic body based trauma informed therapies. Like, thank you. Right. We're finally right out yeah. of, the, of just like talking about it, talking about it, because I talked about it ad nauseum. <laughs> yeah, I remember going to therapy in my early 20s. Um, you know, because my relationship was really, really bad and toxic. Nobody mentioned trauma nobody traced it back to my childhood you know and i just couldn't figure out why i was always in these situations and why life seemed yeah. so overwhelming and i thought yeah. i guess it's just me i got you know like other people don't seem to be having these problems that's right time. and i think what you're pointing to is that it isn't just about the trauma therapies in, in terms of how we work with people with trauma, but it's the understanding mm -hmm. of trauma. So even if a therapist doesn't do trauma-informed therapies, that yeah. it, 
now we're starting to, they're starting to at least understand what trauma is. And so yeah. they fought it because I had a similar experience. No one ever named trauma for me. I can't tell you how many therapists yeah. I saw no one ever named trauma. No one ever yeah. again named anything like gaslighting or emotional abuse or right. abuse or um, any of it or narcissism. What, the, what right. a, you know, nobody ever gave me that language. And I'm sad about that. I'm sad that I tried so hard and I went yeah. that I thought were the experts and. And, and it wasn't intentional, but in a way, it was an extension of the of the gaslighting. Because right. you're spelling it all out. I'm like, here I am in another relationship with either an addict, a narcissist, or unavailable person, and I'm trying mm -hmm. not to do it. Why am I not doing it? No one could say, oh, that's repetition compulsion, mm -hmm. that's reenactment of trauma. Let's go back right. and those roots and see like what you're. Oh, that's because. You were comfortable in the chaos. You learned yes. how to snap. And now, oh, that's trauma bonding. Oh, that's when you're so hardwired to connect and and feel like abuse is even love, where one minute yeah. you're elevated and it's like, oh my gosh, they see me, they love me, I've arrived. Mm. And then, you know, they pull out the floor underneath yeah. you. Or you don't understand what happened. Like I thought right. that was good sexual chemistry. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. You know? And that's right. No one could ever give me that language. And so that's part of why I'm doing what I'm doing on Instagram, you know, and you talked mm. about it being funny and making light of it. And and I do really try to because this recovery work is the hardest, <laughs> bravest, the hardest. Courageous, most difficult like teasing apart work, I think that there is. And it's yeah. hard. It's hard for me even to open a book about trauma and not be triggered by it and feel like, right. oh gosh, flooded. I cannot read this. So I'm trying to sort of, in an entertaining, sort of amusing mm -hmm. way, point to some of these things that no one ever said to me that I wish that right. I would have heard, you know, in my 20s and yeah. in my 30s. And even in my early 40s, it's like, come on, you know, I don't I yeah. hope people don't have to go through what you and I went through where you suddenly wake mm. up, you know, middle age and you're like, what? Like this is yeah. been going on the whole time. Like, Right. I know. Yeah. So going back to earlier, you know, you said something really profound is that safety is your caregiver, right? They're supposed to be whoever assuming, you know, your, your caregiver is um, that that point of reference for safety mm -hmm. and most of us didn't have safe caregivers for various reasons they weren't clearly they weren't regulated and maybe they had addiction issues or mental health issues or whatever assuming they have their they have their own unresolved trauma sure. just getting passed down yep um and then, you know, so as adults, and this is what I see with people that are really struggling with um, going no contact or, you know, I always say, try no contact and give your nervous system a break mm -hmm. um, because, you know, give your nervous system a rest mm -hmm. um, because they do get in these, these, um, you know, where the, the going back to the parent and then the parent is you're crazy and then then they start again as an adult believing yeah i'm 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 crazy i must be crazy yeah or the parent shows some sign of or the parent will come and love bomb and almost the dynamic is similar to the relationships again that familiarity that we find ourselves in right yeah so that struggle is real it is so so hard to break out of that Yes. Um, especially when the parent is gaslighting mm -hmm. and then pulling back, you know, pulling, pulling people back in, whether that's with, you know, oh, I'm, you know, whatever they're doing. Um, a lot of um, back and forth with that. And it's such a struggle. And it's such a cycle. Yeah. It, you know, there was such a cycle. Now. Yeah. You made me flash on a memory, you know, um, I am divorced and remarried. I'm thank goodness in the healthiest relationship of my whole mm, life. Total beautiful. 
I've never doubted that this is a healthy relationship. I've never felt less than. I've never, I mean, it's sort of, mm. it is so opposite of everything I've experienced up to this point. I'm so grateful. But I was married before. And when you talked about giving mm -hmm. your nervous system a break, I wasn't consciously doing that. But I remember mm -hmm. when I was struggling so hard and I knew that things in my marriage were so bad. And I ended up mm. just saying, I'm going to go to the desert by myself for a couple of days. Mm. And I go thinking like, I'm going to figure it all out. I just, I knew I just needed the space yeah. and I didn't, I didn't sit there and obsess about it or, you know, make pro and con lists, nothing. It was just right. the physical space. And I went yeah. to the pool where I was staying and I swam and I felt the sun mm. on my face and maybe I read a magazine. I mean, it was just very gentle. And I'll mm -hmm. never forget, by the time I was driving back from the desert to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to ask for a divorce. Mm. And yeah. it wasn't this top down, like, I'm, I, this is what I need to do. I need to act as if and figure it out and take care of myself. And it was yeah. a organic, bottom, mm. body based. I wasn't wrestling. It was just yeah. like, I knew in my body. And I, and I think that was such a big piece of it was giving my, mm. leaving our apartment where we lived and leaving the right. dynamic of like, what's he doing? And is he going to, you know, whatever that, that codependency that I was in, right. leaving that and just putting the focus on myself mm. yeah. in a restorative way. And that's why I often tell people, maybe you can't go away for a weekend, but can you go for a walk? where mm -hmm. you're orienting to nature and nature legitimately mm. could be a weed that's growing up in a crack in the sidewalk. You just notice some life, <laughs> life. Right. And, and yeah. you walk to that and just notice how you feel in your body. Um, yeah. Can you go out and feel the sun on your face? Can you take a shower at the perfect temperature and just notice what it feels mm. like to have the water falling on your head? You know, yeah. some people go, well, that's not going to fix my marriage. And I'm like, yeah. well, maybe not in that moment, but the cumulative <sighs> effect of yes. being present to ourselves in this way where we're curious yeah. and we're mindful and we're creating safety to mm -hmm. be on skin, that this is where the answers are. Right. That's right. Yeah. And it, it's more of a piece of like, discovery and like a returning to our fuller self than it is like mm. ourselves into being another whole person you know right. like i need to go like fix myself and fix no that's not it it's like no i need to drop in yeah yeah that's right yeah um and that's yeah that's another thing you know and i did that too was getting into yeah i gotta i gotta be fixed mm -hmm. um and you know um the, the, the coaching and the personal development field is really into fixing what's wrong. Oh, you know, you're stuck so and you need yeah. fixing. And, yeah. And, and that, you know, that can be, um, or bypassing, you know, just think positive. Um, yep. Yeah. And, and missing the, and I fell into that for a long time too, until I realized, wait a minute, my nervous system is still doing all those things and none of that really helped a whole lot. Or if it did, it was very temporary. Well, my, you know, my first book that came out over 10 years ago now was on spiritual bypassing. Mm. And the reason that I did my dissertation research on that was because I went to grad school and I heard the term, which is using your spiritual ideas or practices to avoid your feelings yeah. and me being such a good girl in in a 12-step program you know i was like and being an addict and trying to override my nervous system it was mm -hmm. i would do anything so if you're telling me that if i stop drinking but if i pray i'm gonna pray you know if you tell me that i gotta meditate i'm gonna do it and right. i'm gonna do it as obsessively <laughs> as compulsively yeah. with the same intention that it's going to yeah. help me rise above. Like, oh, if I do this, you mean I'm not going to? And what happened is I kept doing these things I, and realizing I brought myself to the yoga mat. Mm. And I'm still me. I, yeah. I couldn't do enough to override yeah. who I really was. That's and so right. it's been this like ongoing 
recognition of that, of like, mm. there's no, there's no like finish line. There's no sort right. of the degree didn't do it, the sobriety, the praying. It's like, I've mm-hmm. tried it all. And at the end of the day, I'm still me. And so when you talk yeah. about how compelling it is when people sort of tout this idea that like, you know, 10 steps to be the new you or, you know, <laughs> do these three things and you're going to be healed. Right. And he isn't healing just like, it makes me kind of crazy. And that's why too, even in my social media, I'm hoping mm-hmm. to bring to bring forth the real deal, which is that, yes, I'm doing this and I'm still, mm. a person. you know, yes, right. these are helpful and I don't do it all the time, you know, right. and, and nothing, I, I haven't met a single person on this earth who has reached a place of like, now I've figured it all out, you know, right. now, <laughs> now I'm right. perfectly healed and surrendered. And it's like, well, okay, yeah. good for you, but you're either quite frankly lying and, and, and to bring it back to gaslighting, it's like, stop implying. Right. There is this great fix. And that is a wonderful sales tool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not real. It's not no. real. Mm-mm. Like, None of us have this all figured out. I'm forever a work in progress. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and I still get triggered, right? It's not somebody said to me the other day, oh, I, I don't get triggered. I healed that. I'm like, <laughs> I still get, I mean, we're human, right? We still get triggered. Yes. There's no, there's no perfectionism, even though I try so hard to do it yeah. perfectly still and you know we we were chatting before today that when you asked me initially to be on your podcast i was like but i i'm not a good guest like i never i never went no contact i've never like and you were like yeah but that's why it's called navigating and i just love that permission in that space to be Mm -hmm. in a process with it because and also to go you know what i never went no contact because i didn't even understand all of this until my stepfather died Mm. And, yeah. and it was complicated because even though I could have easily cut him off if he was just mm-hmm. an isolated person, but he was married to my mother until he died. Mm. Yeah. And I knew that she was under her own spell. I knew that yeah. she was getting the same gaslighting, only in a different way and in a marriage. And right. you know, like I always knew that. And so yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't want to cut her off. You know, I wanted my mom at my wedding and I wanted, and, um, and even though that's still so complicated, Mm. I, I sort of love permission to be complicated and absolutely. Yeah. I don't want perpetuating the shame of like, Oh, now I'm not doing my healing right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so many beat, I, so many people in my community, you know, they beat themselves up. Oh, I broke contact because they gave me a sign and it looked like they changed and I fell for it. And, and, and then I got, you know, the same thing happened. Oh, you know, again. Right. And, and then they, I, I was so stupid for going back. Um, and, you know, and they didn't change because I had this hope I had this, you know, yeah. Yeah, wishful thinking yeah. and fantasizing yeah. that they changed. And you go, oh, so you're you're still human and you have hope? Yeah. Like, wow, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Both of these things are true, right? This information, mm-hmm. wanting to do it different and also, yeah, being just a real person in the world and real relationships that there's just so many nuances and it's so personal. And it one really is. Path is their path, <laughs> you know? Exactly, yeah. Everyone's is different. And that's the other, you know, tricky but kind of beautiful thing about trauma recovery is that it's so personal and what's helpful mm. for one person might not be helpful for somebody else. They're like, oh, right. I did EMDR and I hated it. You know what I mean? And right. so like, EMDR saved my life, you know? Yeah, uh, that's and that right. it's, it's not wrong. It's like, it's just the willingness and the, openness to check in with your own nervous system and see what does work because we'll know yeah we'll know if we check in like oh yeah that's helpful or that resonates i use that language a lot you know right yeah yeah Yeah. so really finding that 
safety or showing our nervous system what safety is, right? Because we can't just tell it. We've got to show it. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, you know, what safety is. And then I think um, even just with orienting and mindfulness, um, noticing that alone shifts so much. Just do not even getting into trauma, just yeah. shifting, you know, and, 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 you know, noticing that internal experience. Mm -hmm. And using um, the senses, at least for me, I find yeah. that so helpful that really the senses are the language of the nervous system. It's mm -hmm. not the thought process. It's like, what do I see right now? And is there yeah. something I want to like, that's pleasing to me that I want to kind yeah. of land on for a moment? Or what do yeah. I and when yeah. I'm deeply listening, even to the traffic that I hear down below, what am mm -hmm. I experiencing in my body? Like that is yeah. a massage for the nervous system for me. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And I can yeah. just feel it. And so we go, okay, yeah, using senses. And some people hate orienting vision. I have clients that are like, Ingrid, don't don't ask me to do that. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> cool. you know, but they maybe love touch. And they yeah. go, yeah, but when I move my hands together or I feel the fabric of my clothing mm. something that feels really comforting or they love a weighted blanket. It just sort yeah. of ah, calms the nervous system. So right. I encourage people just if you're remotely interested, if you want to color, if you want to listen to music, like mm -hmm. pick some flowers and arrange them and um, all of the, just wherever it, you feel curious and you want to try it, try it. And as you're doing it, just see how your nervous system feels and that mm. will take you so much farther than trying to figure out you know right what should i do and how should i do it just go where it's warm go where you're curious that's right yeah and to your body yeah and then in that develop you know developing that self-trust yes. um and and you know really understanding our nervous system and our survival responses um you know gives us that that feeling of there, you know, there, there, I'm, I'm okay. I'm safe. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm, I'm not broken. I'm not flawed. Um, right. And then really seeing that our caregivers are most likely in their own trauma responses mm -hmm. and reacting and, you know, right. drinking or whatever they're doing to cope. Right. Yeah. 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 And it didn't have anything to do with us. Mm -mm. It didn't even start with us. That's right. It's nothing we can fix or change. Yeah, we um, can't fix or change it. That's a slippery slope, you know, that we can get into trying to, you know, I, I tried for decades to get my mom to notice me um, and love me or have some kind of response to me. And she never did. And then I went to achieve and do all these things and I still never got a response from her. Yep. Or that's what I did in my subsequent relationships was like I chose unavailable people because that was mm -hmm. that was the reenactment. They had to be unavailable or abusive totally to unavailable. because yeah. that was the pattern. But then the hope was always, but they're gonna choose me. It's like yeah. the beauty and the beast thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're they're gonna, gonna love me. Be a beast because I am fabulous enough. Yeah. Like, finally recognize. I mean I did it yeah. over and over. Mm. It's so painful. And it then is. when it finally clicked, it was like, oh, you mean I, it's possible to be attracted even. And that mm -hmm. took work <laughs> mm. to be even attracted to a healthy and available partner. And that that attraction feels different. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't have that like crazy chemical, like, woohoo, I'm all in. Right. Yeah. I used to say that was boring. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it felt so different and, and, and so much yeah. so I really thought my husband and I were just meant to be friends. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I think we're just meant to be friends. I mean, I want to spend like every waking moment with him, but I, I think yeah. we're just meant to be friends. It was like, no, this is what healthy attachment Yes. and how it grows. And yeah, man, the contrast. I just never mm. had the contrast. I didn't know right. it was possible. Yeah. Yeah. Because, it, and, and that can, you know, that's where we can get into that self, you know, sabotage those relationships too, because it doesn't feel, right. you know, just feels so unfamiliar. Completely. Yeah. 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 And feeling safe enough to, 
allow ourselves to let that in. Right. And experience it. And give it a little time, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not the all or nothing light switch of the like, oh, this is familiar. This is this is the thing that's going to save me. You know, the, yeah. oh, here's my shot again, you know, where I'm going to finally break this spell. Right. It just feels so different. And yeah, to, to go slow and, and give yeah. yourself some time to really see how that feels. Um, yeah. I always hope that people give themselves that gift of the pause mm. and the um, yeah. see. It doesn't mean that anyone that you meet that doesn't give you those crazy feelings that like they're the one, right? It's still a right. product, like it's dating and are we compatible? And you know, right. all those other quadrants you gotta fill in. But um, just to know that it, it does feel very different if, if your pattern is of these types of relationships. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in wrapping up today, this has been really, really insightful. Mm -hmm. um, so many good nuggets in here. I'm really excited to get this out to my listeners. Um, you know, just I think, you know, wrapping things up, if there's any last things you want to say on, um, you know, any form of gaslighting, again, just just kind of coming back to yourself and pausing and noticing what's happening in my body because that really is the truth and the the center of being able to trust yourself um and we when we come from this psychological manipulation it is really really hard to trust is this real because my somebody's you know denying my reality um yeah any last I, have a, write a, I write a blog for psychology today. Um, the link is through my website, IngridClayton.com. Mm -hmm. Get there. But I have a post called What is Self Gaslighting? Mm -hmm. And it talks about this process of the original gaslighting and how we kind of yeah. carry it. And so, you know, I think that could be a useful piece for people to read and kind of take okay. with them. the other yeah. thing in to what we're talking about, which is just dropping into the body and noticing the experience. At mm -hmm. least for me, the thing that I doubted, gosh, it could just make me emotional even right now. Mm. The thing that I doubted for decades was real. Mm. So if we find ourselves for decades yeah. wondering, is this trauma? Did that really happen? Mm. Was it that bad? That to me, is an indicator that it was mm. bad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We can trust ourselves. And, and you mentioned this building of self-trust, which is also such a big part of recovery. It's like, mm -hmm. I can trust myself. I knew what was going on. And there's a, you know, there's a bigger piece there. It's too much to share. Yeah. I knew what was going on. I've always known. And yeah. then I covered it up and sort of went into my own version of denial and self gaslighting and overcoming. And I don't really need to. And, you know, uh, yeah. and, and it never went away. And so my story is my story. It was what it was. It impacted mm -hmm. the degree that it did. And no amount of like <laughs> over intellectualizing or analyzing or whatever is going yeah. to change it. And so if you find that's yourself right. on that hamster wheel, mm. that's probably a good indication <laughs> that that's yeah. what experienced. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then really looking and feeling that dysregulation. Right. Oh. And how that shows up. Which none of us want to do. I don't want to do it even when I hear you talk about it. I go, oh, yeah. I don't want to feel it, Tracy. <laughs> 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 I, I, love. I want to figure it out but yes that's, right that's why i say this is the hardest bravest like ugh. it really is you have to feel it and yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and to find support in feeling it you know um there's so many brilliant mm. beautiful trauma therapists coaches resources um yeah. system regulation tools um, so find them, find them until yeah. you find the one that's accessible and works for you. 
Absolutely. Beautiful. Love that. Great, great closing. Um, so we're going to end here. And again, thank you so much thank for you. coming on the podcast. I appreciate yeah. it. This has been a, a really great conversation. I can't wait to get this episode out. Um, all right. We will end here. Thanks again. Thanks so much. Thank you.